Hi everyone. In this video I'm going to provide a short walkthrough of multiple regression in R covering a few basics. Before we get started let me note that you can obtain a copy of the data by going to this link right here. The data is stored in an R data file so when, once you've downloaded it, uh, assuming you have R on your computer you should be able to open it up and uh, the data is stored within a data frame that is called reg data. Second, let me, let me note too that uh, we're going to be working with two packages in R the lm.beta package and jtools package. So if you haven't already installed these packages, you're going to need to do so um, to carry out some of the functions that we're going to talk about in this video. So to do that, you're going to use the install.packages function. Uh, once they're installed, you don't have to keep reinstalling them. They'll be available for use, but you will have to use the library function in order to call them up. So you can see right here that I'm using the function library uh, to call up the lm.beta package and the jtools package. So let's go ahead and do those two things and we'll take a look at our data and then we'll uh, move into running our analyses. So what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to use the library function. I've already installed the two packages so I'm going to type in library lm beta uh, in parenthesis and then library uh, jtools in parenthesis and so now both of those packages are activated in memory. So now we'll take a quick look at the data uh, by using our structure function, so str, and then the data frame, the name of it is reg data. So there it is, and you can see that uh, we have uh, uh, various uh, variables that are included. Uh, the data is basically fictional, but we're essentially going to be modeling uh, predictors of student achievement. So the dependent variable in our regression analysis is going to be achievement and for the first model we're going to be using mastery for mastery goals, interest, uh, anxiety, and then gender ID right here. And Gender ID is coded zero for male uh, identified and one for uh, identified as female. So now we have our uh, data ready to go and what we're going to do at this point is run a basic uh, regression model, so a multiple regression model. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an object that is going to uh, house the information that is generated from the regression. So I'm going to create an object that is called fit and I'm going to type it in arrow. The arrow is just the less than sign followed by a hyphen and now I'm going to use the lm function uh, in R. So I'm going to type in lm, so that's for linear model. Following, I'm going to type the name of uh, the dependent variable as it appears in the data frame. So I'm going to type in achieve, follow that up with a tilde, and then the names of the independent variables separated by plus signs. So we have mastery plus interest plus anxiety plus gender ID. And then, uh, so we're only going to go with uh, four predictors out of the set. I'm going to type in a comma, and then next I'm going to type in the data argument equals and then I'm going to set it equal to the reg data uh, which is the name of the data frame. So now when I hit enter um, the analysis has actually been run and I want to use the summary function in order to look at the object that contains the information from the regression. So I'm going to type in summary and inside parenthesis fit and there you go. Let me just note that the object that we're creating right here, this is an arbitrary name uh, but uh, you do have to use that same object name when we're using our summary function right here. So you can see in the output, you can see the description of the model. That's the LM uh, function followed by the model uh, description. Uh, there's our data argument. Uh, then below you can see that we have the multiple R squared, so it's 0 .3903. So basically as a set, the predictors accounted for about 39% of the variation in achievement. Uh, we have the F statistic, and you can see that it's indicating statistical significance. Uh, and then we have the adjusted R square that's given right here. Um, looking at the individual predictors, we have mastery, uh, and you can see the unstandardized regression coefficient is positive and statistically significant. So we would interpret that to mean that students scoring higher on mastery goals were predicted to score higher with respect to uh, achievement. Uh, interest also has a positive uh, regression slope and there's statistical significance there uh, and so that would indicate that students scoring higher on interest were predicted to score higher on uh, achievement. You'll notice that both anxiety and the gender ID predictors, both of those regression coefficients are negative but neither of them are statistically significant. 
Now, let's say that we want the standardized regression uh, coefficients, and this is the reason why we are, we're going to use the lm.beta package, so that we can get those coefficients. So I'm going to type in lm.beta, that's a function in that, in that uh, package, and now we'll type in uh, fit, and in parenthesis there, and so now you can see that we get the standardized coefficients for mastery, for interest, for anxiety, and for gender ID. Now, if we wanted those coefficients to appear uh, in our earlier table, we can do that easily just by uh, saving um, uh, the information from the, the standardized regression coefficients into a new object. So I'm going to call this object stand.coef, and then type in an arrow right here, and then use the lm.beta function again, along with uh, the name of our uh, fit object. And so now I can type in summary. And then inside the summary, we'll type in the name of the previous object, which is stand.coef, <laughs> um, and then hit uh, enter right there. And so now we have a column that contains the standardized regression coefficients. There's uh, obviously the intercept is zero. There's the mastery, uh, interest, anxiety, and gender ID right there. And this column, again, contains all the unstandardized coefficients. And then over here, you you know again you have the standardized errors, t values and p values for the uh, for our tests of each of the predictors in the model. Now, if we have uh, if we want some other output, we can use the sum function from the JTools package. So I'm going to type in sum with two m's, and then inside parentheses I'll type in fit, then comma, and then I can type in p a r t dot c o r. Uh, then add another R2, so that's for part and partial correlations. If we type this uh, equal to true, in all caps there, uh, and then also type in VIFS for VIFs for variance inflation factors, and we set that equal to true, when we uh, hit enter, now you'll see that we get our unstandardized coefficients as before. There's the standard errors, T values, and P values, but we also now have columns for the variance inflation factor, uh, partial uh, correlations and then also part correlations and then all the model fit information uh, that we had seen before appears up here so it's a little bit uh, nicer presentation than what we see uh, up here if it's the case that you want to obtain confidence intervals for your uh, unstandardized regression coefficients you can also use the sum function um, in uh, conjunction with uh, another argument, which is C-O-N-F-I-N-T, and then set that equal to true as well. And so now you can see that you get the estimates, the unstandardized regression coefficients, and uh, by default, you're getting a 95% confidence interval. Now let's say that um, we want to uh, treat mastery goals as a factor variable. So uh, what I've got right here in the data set is a variable that's called mastery LMH and this was created by essentially um, uh, trichotomizing so to speak the uh, mastery variable so it's not really uh, something that that is recommended you don't generally want to cut up um, a uh, continuous variable and make it a categorical variable you lose in, uh, important information when you do that but this is just for the purpose of this demonstration where I'm creating uh, essentially, I've created essentially a categorical variable, and I want to treat this in my model as a factor. So you'll notice that right now the program is uh, registering this variable as an integer. So when you pr perform the analysis on this variable uh, in its current state, it's just going to treat the variable pretty much as if it were uh, continuous. And I don't want to do that for this particular demonstration. So there are a couple ways that you could address this problem. One is to actually change the variable characteristics in the data frame. Uh, so you could use, um, or you could resave the variable in the data frame as a factor. Or uh, during our regression analysis, we can use the factor function in order to have uh, the regression run it as a factor. So that's what we're going to do for this particular demonstration. So I'm going to type in fit. Two, I'm just going to create a new fit object called fit2, uh, followed up with my arrow lm. I'm going to type in the name of the dependent variable again. And in this case, I'll just type in factor. Then inside uh, parenthesis, I'm going to type in mastery lmh, which is the name of our, our variable, plus 
uh, interest plus anxiety plus gender ID. And gender ID is, our, is a, a binary variable, so there's not really um, any need to uh, treat it as a factor. It's going to be uh, fine as it is. Um, so we'll, we'll next type in a comma, and then, so now we have our, our four predictors in the model. So now I need to use a data argument, and I'm going to go ahead and skip to the next line right here. I'm just hitting enter, and because um, I haven't uh, closed everything out, I can continue my commands on the next line. So now I'll type in data equals reg data, and in parenthesis there, and so now when I type in summary and then fit to, you can see I get my output as before, and down here you can see that we have, ma it says mastery two uh, and mastery uh, three right there. So the mastery LMH variable has now been recoded into uh, two dummy variables, and so now the regression coefficients are essentially reflecting the difference in the predicted means for individuals in group two versus group one, uh, and between group three and group one. So these are basically reflecting um, differences in um, means after controlling for the other predictors in the model. So as you can see, we have our interest variable right here. It's still a positive and significant predictor of student achievement. But when we look at our factor variables, we see that uh, the difference uh, between factor one, uh, between group one and group two, uh, that difference is not statistically significant, but the difference between groups uh, three and uh, between one and three uh, is significant, where basically students in uh, uh, at the high level of um, mastery goals uh, is significantly greater uh, with respect to their predicted achievement scores relative to those in group one. So now let's go ahead and take a quick look at uh, using our LM beta function again, just showing you that again. So we'll type in LM beta fit two right here. Uh, again, this is the presentation that you get. Um, just to make it um, appear within the uh, table containing our other regression coefficients. We'll go ahead and save um, the standardized coefficients again. I'm just going to call this stand.coef2, uh, and then uh, we're going to use the lm function, lm beta function right here, and we'll say fit right there. And so now when we use the summary function along with stand.coef2, we can see that we get our standardized regression coefficients um, column. So that pretty well concludes this demonstration and I appreciate you watching.